Hello everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm really excited to talk to you about my NoFab journey. It's been five years. Five years and this is a monumental moment for me in my life, but I'm here to say that use what I have to say here as motivation, as knowledge for your own personal journey because this is a journey between you and yourself. That's it. Don't compare yourself to me because I was in the same shoes you are in now. I was relapsing after two days, after one week, after one month, after three months, after 500 days, I relapsed. Okay? So it's not a linear journey. It is a very squiggly up and down journey. But today I want to cement in the reasons why you should continue continue or pursue no fab full time because it is a mountain but it's a worthwhile mountain there is light at the end of the tunnel and you become a better person in all areas of your life so that's why i'm here today i'm here to talk about what all the are these areas how can i be better if I pursue no fat, because you have to continuously ask yourself why you are on this journey all the time. That's what I found within me. Why am I doing this? What's the purpose? So I had to rely on external resources like YouTube channels, like books, like podcasts to cement in those reasons. I have a no fat audio book. I'll leave a link below. It's like, I can't remember how long it is. I, I, I created it a year or two years ago, but it, it's, it's, it's such a great audiobook. If you're, I think it's an hour long, 45 minutes to an hour long. It's amazing because I laid out why NoFap is important, why, why separating yourself from pornography is beneficial in all areas. So the first thing I want to touch upon today is that it's a problem. Pornography is a problem, or whether it's another addiction you're battling, it's a problem when the behavior can never fully satisfy you. And thus you're using up so much of your internal resources to pursue and seek this, well, this outlet to satisfy you, to numb, soothe, and distract you. And so what I've found is that it's a constant pursuit. It's like the dangling carrot in front of you. You grab onto it, it satisfies you for a good half an hour, but then you need it in a few more hours or maybe tomorrow morning, right? It's, it's co constantly calling out to you. But also what I've noticed is that pornography addiction for me was this internal deity that I couldn't get a grip over. It's like the puppet master and I was the puppet. I, I was a slave to this. Sigmund Freud would call this thing like an internal godlike entity that has full control over you that you yourself get lost in this person you come back with and you feel guilty or ashamed or embarrassed from falling prey to this unconscious process and that's what i felt like with it with pornography every time i would I would watch pornography and masturbate, I noticed I would feel guilty, I would feel drained, and there would be this lingering meaninglessness and hopelessness, because I remember at the time of my life, I wasn't really doing much with myself. I, I wasn't satisfied in my job, I wasn't satisfied in my relationship, I wasn't satisfied in my looks, in my body, in all these areas, so you, when you're, when you're dealing with so much dissatisfaction, you will cling to external means and society certainly dumps that on us. Society will say, oh, beautiful women, oh, McDonald's, fast food, oh, medications, oh, um, social media, clothes, this, that, they, it throws it at you, drugs, alcohol, and so, we fall into a wonderland. It's not reality, but it's a wonderland. The women that you're watching on the internet, 
that's not real. They're not in front of you. It's an easy way out from the real thing. Because the real thing is really difficult. The real thing will judge you. because, And the real thing requires a dance. It requires skill. It requires you to speak articulately and precisely and to speak your truth and to and to have fun and it's very complicated to develop a real relationship in all of those areas. It takes re real responsibility. And that's what I've noticed for me, separating myself from pornography all of these years, I've noticed that I've, I have to focus on reality. I have to live in the here and now. Because if I rely on these external means culture is providing me, that's not really going to help me. That's going to keep me in the domain of Neverland. I don't want to live there. And do, I'm asking you, do you want to live there? Because it's okay if you do. At least you acknowledge it, but I couldn't acknowledge it anymore. I, I was really not happy with who I was in my life. And so you become a slave to this particular deity within you. And I was a slave to this. And you sacrifice your own morals, you sacrifice your own ethics, you sacrifice a little bit of your soul, you sacrifice a bit of your money and your time in pursuit of this non-reality and, and, well, this deity that you put at the, the height of your... Because to, under, to realize if that thing is at the is it high on your values hierarchies, how much time and energy are you devoting in pursuit of this thing? And for me, it was, it was every day I was pursuing this. And I was thinking about it. And that's all, another thing too, is it's not just watching pornography. It's the pornography leads to thoughts about pornography. It leads to sexual desires that linger. Because for me, I noticed that pornography had a ripple effect. And from the men I've talked to about this, pornography has a ripple effect. It's like a hydra. You cut off the one head, five more heads grow. And the one thing I noticed with pornography is that when I decided to quit, there would be this come down effect where I'd feel irritable, I'd feel restless, I'd get headaches. And this was the big one, the strong, sexual desire, desires I would feel from the cues out in the real world, right? Beautiful women, beautiful women on the posters, or just the, the images that would pop up randomly in my head. And even the time of day would cue you. If you watch pornography at a certain time, that'll cue you. Or maybe you watch pornography when everyone leaves the house, then it cues you up. It's a cue, right? Everyone's gone, the house is quiet, boom, you're going to watch because it's a cue. It's, so there's these cues all around you. And so what I've noticed was as soon as I separated myself, I was in this realm of cues. I was like, oh my God, there's cues everywhere. How am I gonna contend with my recovery? How am I actually gonna get two days down the road free of pornography? And that's a big question to ask yourself. But also I noticed that now that I'm absent from pornography, there's no more sneaking around anymore. I don't have to worry about hiding my laptop and the history or deleting my history or um, locking the door or, you know, if you have a family, you know, being sneaky about it. You don't have to worry about that anymore. That's a plus, man. That's a big one too. Erectile dysfunction, another common element of pornography. This is way too common. So erectile dysfunction, there's, pornography provides you with, with super stimuli, right? It's, it's being on the edge of your novelty. And then when, when you come back into reality and when you are with a real person, I've noticed in my, rela my previous relationship when I was watching pornography that the intimacy would not satisfy me. It would not even come close. And yes, there were times where erectile dysfunction did occur. Very common. Because 
I, re I also remember having to rely on my imagination when be with a real woman. In, re imagination pertaining to sexual fantasies that I've watched on the internet. That's real common. And so once you separate yourself from pornography, this, this extreme blast of dopamine that you're getting starts to come down. So, but once it comes down, the, on the other side of that is the pain, right? And so the pain starts to come up. You start to feel irritability. You start to feel restless. But you have to go through this withdrawal phase in order for your body to regulate itself back again. And you have to look at this as a, as a battle between you and yourself. Because a lot of people beat themselves up going two days and then relapsing or going a week or a month and relapsing. But you have to look at the broader picture. How many times were you doing this a week before? Okay, so every day. So seven days a week. And then this month, practicing NoFap, how long, well, how many times have you done it? Okay, well, three times in a month. Well, that's an improvement, man. That's like, that's not even half a week. That's a crazy improvement. So look at your progress like that. Like you, you relapse, you're going to beat yourself up and that's part of the process. So don't worry about it because it's important, right? You want to understand within yourself, this is not where I want to be. Damn, Brad, you relapsed. Not good. Okay, well, this is not where I want to be. It's adding fuel. I'm getting angry. Anger is good. But also look at the broader picture. Okay, well, out of the month, only three times. That's, that's incredible. That's incredible. That's progress, man. That's progress. And then there's this dependability that you have on pornography, which helps you to feel normal again. Because normal is feeling stimulated. Uh, you're relying on pornography to relax you, to calm you down, because maybe your life is stressful and you don't want to face that stress head on. And so you rely on the pornography as a crutch. Just like how instead of talking to the real woman in the Starbucks, you decide to, hey, I'm going to fall back on pornography because that's, that's easy. It's going to satisfy me. It's, you know, it's not going to, there's no rejection involved, but that's part of the, the course is how are you going to develop your skills if you don't face the real thing? It's like Wendy in the Peter Pan story, right? Peter Pan doesn't want a, a family. Peter Pan is actually kind of repulsed by Wendy. And she's a, she's a real woman who judges and, and, you know, responsibility revolves around that. But Peter Pan's like, no, I want to be king of the lost boys in Neverland and, you know, have everything granted to me at my whims. And trust me, that's not what you want. There's no satisfaction in that. There's no meaning in that. It is filled with nothingness, hollowness, responsibility. That's what Jordan Peterson always talks about. It's like, where's the meaning going to come from? In the responsibility. How much responsibility you take on is in proportion to how much meaning you want to manifest in your life. Now, there's phases to pornography recovery that I want to briefly go over because this is also important too. So, for me, I noticed the first phase was being exposed to somebody who is on NoFap. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a clip on YouTube, maybe it's an uh, Instagram clip. They go, okay, I'm on NoFap, I feel good, whatever. And then you go, what's the next phase? Resistance and denial. You laugh at them, you're like, what is this guy talking about? No fap, man. There's nothing wrong with pornography. I've been doing it my whole life. It's healthy. It's this and that. And so there's that phase. But what I've noticed with me is those people who, who restricted themselves of pornography, the seed becomes planted within my head, right? There's this, this voice that's saying, Hey Brad, you could do that. You know, the answer is a lie in the grind. The answers lie in the darkness. Like, what are you doing? And it's like, it's this internal voice that drew me towards these people again. So then that's the third phase. It's this internal struggle with truth. 
and that leads you to interest. Then you go back to the video, maybe a week later and you watch the video and then you're interested and then you're like, okay, well, let's see what this guy has to say. Well, how did NoFap improve his life? And then the fourth phase is attempts at the separation. So now you're trying to go one day without it and then what happens? Well, maybe you succeed, maybe you even go two days, but then there's going to be that relapse, right? And that's the fifth phase. You relapse and that causes guilt and shame. And it's also a big realization. Oh my God, I don't really have control over this thing. It has more control over me. And that's when it sinks in. And then the sixth phase is you reattempt NoFap because there is no going back to the unconscious phase you were at the beginning of all of this because you know too much now. There's no going back to the old ways of watching pornography and living freely and smoking weed and haha, wait, you know, living that hed hedonistic lifestyle. You know too much. You've seen too much. It's like the Buddha story. When he moves out of his bubbled, safe kingdom into reality and he witnesses death and decay and suffering, he goes back home traumatized with PTSD. Why? Because he just discovered reality, man, and it haunts you. There's no going back. There's no unseeing reality, no matter how much you want to unsee it. Right? And so now that you've gone a few days and then you've relapsed, you go, okay, well, I could do this. It's possible. But also I, I can, I see within myself, like there are benefits. Like you can't help but notice that there are truths to what you're doing, to what you are seeking. And so the path is not linear. It's a zigzag pattern. But rem remember that it's a battle between you and yourself. You keep watching material. You keep reading about pornography. You keep cementing in the reasons why you're doing this. Why do you want to move away from this? Well, because it causes much social anxiety or it, do it doesn't help me with my, my social skills. It, or it doesn't help me connect more with my partner. It doesn't help me in general in regards to like my morals and ethics and yeah absolutely so it's this constant reminder like i keep saying but you have to also remember to have a plan but like what's your plan when you're gonna have this bad day what are you gonna do you're going to go to the gym you're going to go to the library coffee shop you're going to hang around your kids you're going to take your wife out what are you going to do because those days are the most important days because it's easy to, on a, on a good day, it's easy to not watch it. But when you're feeling crummy, when you're sick or when you are, you know, frustrated at your boss, whatever it is, or you have a fight with your partner, it's what are you going to do? Why? What are the reasons why you're doing what you're doing? And then... Lastly, to conclude the video, what I like to do is visualize what you want to do in the moment of temptation. So you sit comfortably in the morning, preferably when you start your day. So in those moments when you're feeling like you want to relapse, like you're going to fall into temptation, visualize how you want to respond to that. So for me, I visualize myself you know, adjusting my posture. I visualize myself going to the gym, working out. I visualize hugging my wife and then telling her, you know what? I did it. You know, I, there's temptation arose today and I'm proud of myself. You know, you give yourself a pat on the back, pat on the shoulder. It's like I accomplished something really difficult. So imagine the outcome of what you want when you're when you expect a bad day to occur, which is every day because the dragon always pops up, right? If you're battling no fat and you're at the beginning phases, well, it's important to visualize what you want in the future. How are you gonna to respond to these low moments? Because 
if you correct yourself in those low moments, that really affects your brain circuitry. You really rewire those brains because there's, so, there's these strong circuits in there right now pertaining to your impulsive, reflexive uh, response to pornography. And when you, when you say no to that response, you strengthen a new pathway. A new one starts to form. A pathway that you've, you've, you haven't trotted down before. And so this, this all pertains to my journey. This is all, everything I've been learning through my experiences on NoFap. And to conclude this video, I've separated myself so far away from pornography that there have been months where I haven't been intimate with Maggie. I know that it's not just because I'm in a relationship that that you know it's easy to go on nofap i've been on nofap for months without being intimate in my relationship which i don't recommend by the way because i do want to be intimate regularly with my partner because it's really important for the relationship but there have been times through circumstances that i don't want to get into where we haven't been intimate and I've proven to myself that even under those worst conditions, I can still maintain my faith to no fap and my faith to God, my faith to um, why I'm really on this journey. And you have to prove to yourself that on those bad days, man, that you can persevere. And that's where I'm going to leave you today. Thank you everybody so much for being here. Please leave your comments below if this resonated with you. Please share your NoFap experiences with me and rise above pornography. I'll see you next time. Thank you everybody for being a part of this community. Please comment below. Also give this a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because then you'll be the first to know whenever I release a new video.